my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord of my strength and my life, whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked enemy and my foe come upon me, to my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though the host shall be camped against me, my heart shall not fear. Though the war shall raise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing that I desire in the Lord, that I will seek out, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to require this temple. For at the same time, the trouble of you shall hide me in the region, and the secret of the tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon the rock, and now shall my, and now shall my head be lifted up. Of my enemy around, around about me, therefore I will offer this temple as a sacrifice of joy. I will sing gay, I will sing praise unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry to my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me when God said, Seek ye faith, my heart shall say unto thee, I say to the Lord, will I seek? Hide my face from me. Put not my servant away in anger, for I have been my helper. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O Lord, for my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord shall take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me into the path, plain path, because of my enemies. Leave not over unto the will of the enemy. For false witness are written up against me, and such as is written upon my I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait upon the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. May God bless us read his word. Amen. Amen. There's a change in the program. You know this morning. We try to work it out. And right now we call for a test. Help the Father, in the name of Jesus, we come now. Go to your throne of grace. Lord, you've been good and kind to your own life. And we want to say thank you, Lord, our Lord, our Lord, for keeping us in good health. Lord, we pray for sick and fit all across the world. Lord, you know the situation in the world. You know what the fire is going around. You can speak right now and the fire will go away. Lord, it is our will in the name of Jesus. Speak right now. Speak right now. Go to sick and fit and all. It was all over the world. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our crowns and police officers. Military men and women are not even the sheep of the life of life of others. We pray for them and their families, Lord. Lord, if any of us have been in anything that has been in sight, I speak in the name of Jesus. And bless us right now. Lord, we are all all short of that. Lord, we are all in sin and all in short. That's the name that you give us right now. And bless us one by one. Lord, we pray for those that drive prayer this morning. Somebody call your holy name and I smite 
need you right now. Somebody lost hope and say, God, in the name of Jesus. sit up here and play and then run back here and push buttons and come back here. We want, we want our service to continue to flow. Amen? Amen. We want the service to continue to flow, especially when it starts at 11 o'clock. Well, we start at 10, but I'm saying as far as the camera and everything starts at 11. No. All right? No, we're live now. Well, okay. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Just the pastor not out here. Yeah. Just the pastor not out here. He's coming. There you go. Y'all say amen for our amen. 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 Give God praise for our pastor. Come on. Give God praise for our pastor. Amen.
conquering some obstacle to get here. Uh, all of us leaving some problem or, amen, bringing some problem to get here. Uh, I uh, was yesterday was at the hospital with my stepdad for quite a while yesterday. And when I got there, there were very few people in person by the time I left. As I was leaving, relieved, a lot of people were coming in. They were stressed and grieved. Amen. So, you know, it's an ongoing cycle in life for us. Yes. Yes. A lot of us are recovering from something, returning to something. Oh, yes. help us. No. But in that, uh, when I, I thought about sitting there in the mercy room, they were looking at me. I watched the people's responses, uh, how they were, how they were handling the situation. And I realized that uh, there are only three directions in the way you can look. Are you going inward, outward, or upward? Uh, when you're looking inward, what you're doing is uh, you're checking your response. How am I handling this thing? But in that, see, these directions, you can't hypocritically look at those directions. You can fool a lot of folks, you can't fool yourself. Secondly, I look, you look outward. And outward, uh, uh, you look at the response uh, of others and to others based on how you react. So sometimes how you react determines how the other right, how the folks closer to you are going to react. Yeah. And to determine how you're going to react, uh, you need to look up. Yeah. You look up toward the one uh, who causes all things. Yeah. He promises all things. Lord, Lord, offer the good. Those who love God, those who call according to our Christ. Now, I have learned this point during this pandemic. That everything that's going to work out for the good may not work out only for the good on this side. Right. I've learned that. Yeah. Everything's not going to work out for the good on this side. Yeah. Most of them will. But he tells us that so many faithful died of, of not seeing the promise with their eyes. Yeah. But seeing the promise persistent, not conditional. Yeah. So it's wonderful for us. It's wonderful to see you all. Amen. So glad that, you know, I'm looking up. We're, we're, if I'd have heard the response to scripture, I'd have been out there on time. I need to hear the response from each of you. So, so say, Pastor, you know, pay your bills, but also pay attention. <laughs> so I will pay better attention. Uh, yeah. Amen.
share with you. Uh, I share, as your pastor, I need to share my ups and my downs. Amen. And so uh, I want to read a letter that I received uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and well, I just, I just think you, I just want to share with you. It says, Dear Mr. Stephen Bass, congratulations. You have been selected for induction to the Boys Court Club Hall of Fame. Girls in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Honor recognizes outstanding alumni for achievements in their respective fields and athletic contributions to the club. The induction ceremony will take place during our annual recognition program. It would be terrific if you could share brief remarks, three to five minutes. You know what I mean? 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 <laughs> <laughs> we will also acknowledge the staff, board, volunteers, and other supporters for the commitment to children and the mission of the club. A reception will be held at Teen Center at 9220 West Frost. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that's where, remember where uh, uh, QT was when they, when they built uh, uh, the Things that occur in, in life. I think about the young lady in East 
St. Louis schools. Amen. Children were burned in. Now hear me. Somebody is saying, where was God? Somebody's probably still saying in their family, where is God? He's at the same place he was with his son. He's the same wonderful, trusting, trustworthy God. When we're celebrating something, when we're mourning the Lord. Essence is, is he God now? A heavenly moment is, you know, pain and suffering, whatever. That's a hellish moment. I believe, I believe God allows us to have those moments to recognize what, what he's saving us from in hell. You know what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, he's yeah. saving us from hell this moment. Uh, uh, now, so if that's the case, Pastor, what's a heavenly moment? A, he a heavenly moment is not uh, things are going well, things are going great, celebrating a birthday. Uh, no, that's not a heavenly moment. The heavenly moment is in the midst of your hellish moment, you know that God is there. All right. That's the heavenly moment to be in the middle of hell and know David said, if I go to the gates of hell, you are
said, but but it's one, not a good thing, but you cannot. You know what that was? That was the essence of time. He said, you have any tree you want here, except this one, because this one is mine. God is serious about what belongs to him. Remember, the only two things that God says are his in scripture, right? Tithes and vengeance. He said, those are mine. Don't mess with them. Amen. Bless you all, amen. Bless
God is my everything. You stand in front of Come on. Amen. God is my everything. Amen. Would you please clap your hand for the choir? Come on.
things you have done. I'm grateful for the victories won. Somebody shout, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I don't see you guys here like you really mean it. I'm grateful. I'm grateful.
Terra, Mar, 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 Amen. 
We thank God for it. Amen. There's nothing like a joyful fellowship celebration. Amen. Amen. But here we, we buy the truth and sell it not. But where the truth is spoken, like apples of gold, is picking and steel. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. He's also the God of all comfort and the God of all hope, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begun to get again to a mind by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed. Blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us take God's word and turn to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We stand for the reading of God's word. The message is for all of us. I dedicate this message to my friend Charles Fletcher. Shown me this great faithfulness, God faith, because He's here today anyway. Amen. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Our hearts are with you, but the pleasure. Amen. We love you. Amen. But the happiest person really is your sister. You gotta hear me. Amen. Amen. She's saying, COVID smoke. Let us say together, speak Lord, speak Lord, our servant hear it, our servant hear it, in Luke chapter 24, verse 21, verse 21, we have it, say amen, amen, let's read it together, please, for we trust it, and he which should have remained in Israel, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done, amen. Seated in the presence of the Lord. And for the time that is mine, I'd like to, amen, speak to you on the topic, what a weekend. Right. What a weekend. Uh, in March of, I guess that's 19, uh, this, uh, March 15th was our final worship service before this pandemic took over for us. Now, we were aware of the pandemic earlier in the year, like in January or so, uh, but the death of Kobe Bryant decreased the, the, the news about the pandemic. All of y'all remember that. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had an event going on here at the church that afternoon, and so between the morning service and afternoon service, we were made aware about Kobe Bryant's okay. helicopter crash. Uh, but then as, as, as the pandemic continued to, uh, to grow, uh, the pandemic overtook the news about Kobe Bryant. Uh, Taking some of that. And so uh, that was that March, so on that, uh, like the March, maybe the, that it was, a, I think our last one was March the 15th. So the week of the 15th of March, uh, I, tried, I tried to call every member of the church and, and let me know that we weren't holding services the following Sunday. Now I don't know if you remember, but I said uh, Easter was gonna be the first Sunday in April. And I say, I'm sure we'll be back in the sanctuary. Okay. Uh, and then I try to be, uh, you know, overly theological, of course, you know. <laughs> we have plenty of people God the Lord. Just, you know, just tell them this is every no sir. I'll tell you why I say that. It's because I said, I thought, uh, when Easter comes, God will use that as the time to get us back in church. Uh, and so when Easter weekend came and we weren't, I had 
serious emotional problems. I was a man for the week. And it was that weekend that I started feeling the absence. Uh, and I thought, man, what a weekend this, it was for us. Or for me. I don't know about you, now, but for me, I had struggled that weekend. Yeah. That first Easter weekend we couldn't come to church, I struggled. Amen? Amen. Amen. And God said, what about that first Easter we had? Uh, it says, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. So, it's, it's, he been going a whole weekend. Oh, y'all. Y'all ain't never preached this thing about the Lord. On Good Friday, uh, for us, we used to have, we're used to having Good Friday services at one of the Berean uh, 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 churches, and we have the seven last sayings. Yes. Uh, yeah. Good Friday was a, was a big thing for us, amen, for celebrating. Easter. But God said, no, you need to understand what it was really like. So in the first good Friday, I see here, that God says, everyone struggled on crucifixion Friday. Mm. Disciples struggled to keep faith. Pilate struggled to save face. Women struggled to help Jesus. The Pharisees struggled to discredit Jesus. Soldiers struggled to hurt Jesus, but nobody struggled more than Jesus. People called him a liar, beat him with whips, plastered his face with spit, and crucified him in front of family and friends, and as few as they were. While falsely accused, no one defended him. Struggled under the weight of the cross, no disciples helped him. When he hung up to die, no one rescued him. Not even God, his heavenly Father. God the Father was sacrificing Jesus. But the Bible says, well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, I'm going to wrap this thing. So it's good to see you, man. It was God who gave his son. Yes, Lord. Erased the Pharisees from the script, removed the Roman soldiers from the scene, Jesus still would have died. Yes. Father God both offered and accepted the sacrifice of his son. How did Jesus endure that pride? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us have a good Friday to endure. Yes. Pandemic, panic, persecution, pain, yeah. perilous times, all of us have a good Friday. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you know, and I'm going to say it publicly, how much it means to see you here with me. All right. It means a lot to me. Not just pastorally, but personally. To see you here. Oh, you, you, oh, you ought to hear me. She is here anyway. Darkness eclipsed the noonday sun on Jesus' Friday. And shadows overcast ours as well. So how did Jesus endure that good pride? This is what he did. All right. A Hebrew says, for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Yeah. Yeah. The he turned from the troubles on earth to the promise of heaven. 
During the Friday suffering, Jesus spoke 13 times. Ten of those were to God or about God. Son of man will be, beloved, will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. He told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. He said, Father, into thine hands I commit my spirit. Eighty percent of all that Jesus said was either to God or about God. He was always talking to or about God. What about you? On your prideful Fridays, some of us are sitting right here on a good Friday experience. Oh, y'all know Y'all ain't hearing me? On frightful Fridays, where is your mind? Beloved, God wants to consume at least 80% of your thoughts. At least. The beloved Hebrew is willing to help. Oh, you better hear me. He says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. Temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Yeah. Oh, help me somebody. Think more of him. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. As heaven gets bigger, our problems will grow smaller. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, beloved, I'm telling the authority of the word of God. That's how Jesus handled his pride. Yeah. Right. He will also help us handle our silent Saturday. You better hear me. Saturday was silent. Yeah, yeah. He spoke much on Friday, but nothing on Saturday. He was as silent on Saturday as the grave that held him captive. God was silent. Yes. On Friday, he made himself heard. He tore the curtain of the temple. He opened the grave of the dead. He rocked the earth. He blocked the sun. Yeah. He sacrificed the sun in heaven. Yeah. Earth heard much from God on Friday, yeah. but nothing yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. Beloved, Jesus was silent. God was silent. Saturday was silent. You know, on Easter weekend, we always uh, skip Saturday. Yeah. It's all about Friday and Sunday. Yeah. They get all the attention. Crucifixion and resurrection gets all the attention. But let's not skip silent Saturday. Uh-huh. All of us get in the middle of one. Or all of us sit in the middle of a silent Saturday. Keep living. Problems have come, but solutions haven't arrived. You're waiting to hear about your health, your loved one, your job, your future. So far, no answer. All right. Then you wonder, did I disappoint? Where is God? God's aware of all your words, all of your anxious moments. All of your doubts, yeah. all of your fears, all of your discomfort, all of your intimidation. Mm. Amen. Your mind is a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Your world is infected and affected. Mm. Why doesn't God say something? Come on. What do I do until he does? Mm. Jesus shows us what to do. We need to do what Jesus did. All right. We are to wait yeah. and trust. Yeah. God puts you on hold, don't hang up. All right. All right. Jesus was trusting the promise of heaven. For well, the Bible says, 
Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Mm. Oh, I'm trusting him today. Yes, sir. Amen. He knows God will not leave him in, in the grave. God will never leave you alone in fear. Yeah. Silence is not absence. Mm. Inactivity is not apathy. Yeah. Saturdays, beloved, have their purpose. Yes, sir. But frankly, they allow us to feel the full force of God. Mm. If Jesus would have rose 15 minutes after dying, we really would appreciate it. Oh, I know y'all want to amen. See that little saved and sanctified. If he just died at five o'clock, died at five fifteen, you know, whatever. Maybe he really wasn't. Yeah. 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 Amen. You can have anything in fifteen minutes. You can have a conversation with me for fifteen minutes. Amen. So now let me know where am I supposed to? I still got some breathing to do. But after dying, beloved, for his reasons and seasons, God inserts a Saturday between our Friday and our Sunday. Yes. If today is your Sabbath, let me encourage you to trust God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep trusting, and God will allow you to endure, not enjoy, but employ right. this Sabbath. He will make it work for you. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Beloved, he said on Good Friday, Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said that so that you would never have to say it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He said, My God, my God, why? So that you would never have to say, My God, my God, why? But then, there was Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Mm. Oh, here. We when Jesus died, hope died. Yes. Yes. Nobody believed he was the Messiah, yes. the Son of God. There was no Christian because there was no Christ. Yes. Now, let me tell you, you got your mask on. Uh, but hold your nose, don't take you deep in some water today. All right. Amen. Okay. So, uh, you might want to, if you want to write it down, write it down. But I'm going to teach you something today that I want you to ever forget. Yes, sir. Well, you better hear me. Amen. This was worth the price of admission. <laughs> Beloved, there was no Christian because there was no Christ. Lights out on everybody's faith. Mm. The broken hearted mother. The shadow apostles, yeah. they were crushed. Mm -hmm. If Jesus couldn't keep himself alive, uh, what good is he for us or to us? Yeah. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. But let me get this. Jesus was not who he claimed to be. His teachings was wonderful. His miracles were enchanting. But what set him apart was the things he claimed to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, help me somebody. We're, we're attributes only possessed by God. We claim the attributes he said he was could only be possessed by God. Yeah. Forgiveness, being greater than the temple, mm. being greater than Moses, yeah. being greater than the Sabbath, yes, being greater than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, yeah. being greater than the prophets. I am the greatest. Yeah. Labels that only God carries. Right. The believers followed him not because of what he taught. At times, it was in spite of what he taught. Mm. You know, in John chapter 6, he was teaching, and he turned to the disciples, and everybody else left him. Right. I need you to hear me. He turned to them, he was teaching the disciples, but then he turned to them and said, can you leave me also? Right, right, right. You leave me because they, they, it was hard for them to hear. And you know what they said? They didn't say, uh, Lord, uh, no, we're not going to leave because, you know, because of the stuff you do. They didn't say, Lord, we ain't gonna leave if he fed the 5,000. Peter said, Lord, we never shall we go. When you alone have the words uh -huh. mm. of eternal life. Yeah. 
and we know and believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When faith in what he did, when faith in what he taught, when faith in who he was. But now, he's They were following Jesus, not primarily for what he taught, but primarily for what he claimed to be. Don't ever forget that. They didn't follow Jesus Christ because of what he taught. They followed Jesus Christ because of who he claimed to be. He told them that. We have we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ. You have the words of eternal life. Not because of the miracles you perform. We know and believe and are sure that thou art the Christ. The Son of the Living God. We follow you not because of what you do, but because of who you are. Who you claim to be. But now you are. So when he died, he was buried. And they figured they were wrong. And they all expected him to stay dead. Oh, you better hear me. No one waited outside the tomb. Resurrection morning come, come from ten to backwards. There was not one person that waited for him. Now, one of them claimed, I never lost faith. Could not one of them say, I never doubted. But something happened. Yeah, yeah. Changed everything. There was the event, the movement, and the Bible. Now it's important that the, the sequence, I want you to say the event, the, event, the, movement, the movement, the Bible. The, Bible. The, event, the event, the movement, the, movement, the, Bible. the Bible. One last time. The event, the, event, the, the movement, the movement, then the Bible. Yeah. Now, hold your nose, you're going on the wall. The Christian faith did not begin with Genesis. Mm. It began with Jesus. Yeah. 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 Not the birth, not the teaching, not the preaching, but the resurrection of Jesus yeah. changed everything. The Bible didn't create Christianity. The Bible didn't create. The resurrection created Christianity. Oh, you better hear me. The resurrection created Christianity. The Bible is not how we know about the resurrection. The Bible was assembled 300 years after the resurrection. Oh, you better hear me. The Bible was assembled 300 years after the resurrection. I mean the Gospels and the Epistles. The first to tell of the resurrection was Matthew, Mark, Luke, yeah. John, Peter, yeah. James, yeah. Paul. It was the guys that started talking about it. Yeah. Luke says, I talk to everybody and then I put it all together. Yeah. Oh, y'all, you yeah. hear me? I witness accounts, amen, that something had happened. Yeah. Not based on what they read, but that the disciples went and said, told them something had happened. Oh, help me. James, his brother, was in act as a leader because he said, because of what happened, that his brother was his Lord. Not because his brother died. Oh, help me so much. The Bible says he appeared to the 500 and then to James. Because they all saw him die. They said, but when he cried out from the dead, he said, James, this is real. Right. When James saw him at the day, he said, oh! Oh, y'all didn't hear yeah. 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 He realized that something yeah. had happened. Yeah. So James said, because he rose from the dead, you no longer my brother, yeah. you are my Lord. Oh, 
is because of Jesus. Now, in that, to many of us don't understand the resurrection changed everything. Yeah. But to many of us don't want to call his name. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, don't you believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? Mm. Yes, the words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it's the Father living in me yeah. who is doing his work. A church group invited a speaker to address their meeting. And they said, let's, let's talk about God. The group leader told him, believe out Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he asked, you know, why? The leader said, well, some of our prominent members feel uncomfortable with Jesus. So just use God and we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Accepting such instructions was a problem for the speaker who said later, without Jesus, I have no message. Yeah, oh, you better hear me. Uh, uh, something similar was that for following Jesus in the days of the early church. Local religious leaders conferred together to warn the disciples not to speak about Jesus. The disciples knew better. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. See, we have a that we deserve our attention. Amen. But, but, but look, it's not what David Ruffin uh, told all the temptations. They're not coming to see you, Otis. Oh, you better hear me. They're not coming here because God is the Father. All right. Come on now. To claim to believe in God and not in His Son Jesus Christ is a contradiction in terms. Jesus clearly describes the unique relation between Himself and God. I and the Father are one. Thus establishing His deity. Oh, help me somebody. That's why you can say if you believe in God, believe also in me. You better hear me. Paul knew that Jesus is the very nature of God and equal with God. We need not shy away from the name Jesus. For salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given us to mankind by which we must be saved. Yeah. Beloved, we talk about Jesus because Jesus is like the juice. The juice is worth the squeeze. Right. Help me somebody. To me, I must, amen. But taking the juice the, that ain't worth the squeeze. All right. Today, Jesus still waits beside the well of water to meet with those who will come to him. He's waiting right now, just as he waited by the well of Samaria to meet that one outcast woman. Right. In all of her emptiness and her unhappiness, Jesus, amen, was waiting and told Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I need to have dinner with you tonight. Yeah. Oh, He's waiting for us. Yeah. Amen. Beloved, we all have a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Oh, you better hear me. You got one. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I have a divine right. appointment. Right. And I can't cancel it. Can't cancel. Amen. I can't delay it. Can't delay it. Amen. I'll say it. I'll say Get it. on my knees and pray it. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yeah. Beloved. Jesus is patiently, personally, passionately waiting to meet you. Right. Oh, you better hear me. He knows all about you. Yeah. You ain't got no secret Jesus doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Amen. The small secrets of your heart, the unspoken dreams of your imagination, he knows. Yeah. The unrevealed thoughts of your mind, he knows. Yeah. The emotional shares of your past, he knows. Yeah. The joys and heartache, he knows. Yeah. The presence of pain, yeah. he knows. Yeah. The presence of failures, he knows. Yeah. Your eyes and humiliation. He knows your needs and your doubts. He knows. He knows all about you. He knows your inside. He knows you out. He knows the past, the present, the future. He knows. He knows. He cares. He cares. But he dies. He dies. Did we die? Did we die?
then went and told the story. Yeah. And he gave it to them to read. Yeah. Lord help me. I don't want to do anything. I don't want an hour, a day. Yeah. I don't want a minute. Yeah. I'm not doing anything without my Lord and Savior. Lord, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 Let us stand to receive benediction. Look up. Look up. And love him. Look up. down. Look down. And pray to him. Look in. Look in. And trust him. Trust him. Look out. Look out. And worship him. And worship him. Live life. Live life. And expect to him. Now unto him. That is able to keep you from yes. all. Present you faultless to the presence of his glory and exceed in joy. To the only wise God our Savior. In glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. I love your coming, Jesus. I'll bring you to the rebel.